200 million is a lot. Uh, valuation now 1.6 billion. How does that make you feel? Well, so I mean, it makes the old, the old team feel feel pretty good. Uh, I, I think what matters about the valuation is not so much the valuation per se; it's maybe the ambition uh, behind the company and behind the valuation. Uh, so today, clearly, what we want to do is to expand the company globally. We started from France. We went into Europe. Uh, more recently, we went into countries like Asia, Mexico, Turkey, or Russia, and we've seen phenomenal traction. So we want to expand with this funding uh, to a global scale, essentially. Two hundred million. How much of that could potentially be put into M&A? Because you've been pretty acquisitive going into new countries. Would you need to buy local competitors in Brazil and Asia? Yes, yeah, so, so it's been the strategy to expand. So we acquired eight companies in the last three years, which you know, for a startup of our size is, is actually a lot. Uh, so the way we go into a country, we either set up shop. That's what we've done in Turkey. That's what we've done in India. Or typically, we find a great team. That's what we found in, uh, in countries like Mexico, like Italy, like Poland. Uh, and we go and acquire companies. So in a way, the, the $200 million is going to be a mix of acquiring companies, as we've done, uh, or not, and just setting up shop ourselves in, in a new country. Nicolas, what is the, the one thing that people ask you, right? When you uh, look at these venture capitalists, when you're looking for funds, is there one killer question that they all ask? So I would say the main one that we get since the beginning, it's just evolved, was the size of the market. And I think the, the main thing people misunderstood from the beginning was the, the very large size of that transport market we disrupt. Right? So initially it was, it was seen as, okay, it's probably something like hitchhiking and very few people are going to do that. Uh, and today we're talking about 20 million people in Europe actually doing that, growing 100% year on year. Uh, and what people came to realize is that what we're disrupting is the way people travel between cities, right. which is a massive market. So it's buses, so it's public transport that you're disrupting. And it's it's, the, it's uh, also car rental services. Well, it's, it's actually even the way you use your car. I, I think what people actually underestimate is that today, 80% of the city to city travel in Europe is actually done by car. Right, so only 20% is done by train or bus. So what we see is, we, of course, we're going to end up disrupting maybe train companies and bus companies. But I think the bigger part of the equation for us is, how do we change people's behavior with a car? So today, we see that 50% of our members that start using Blabla Car as a driver end up becoming a passenger in someone else's car. So actually, the bigger thing we, we disrupt is how people use their car, and we increase car occupancy uh, on a pretty global scale. But I mean, that's great for efficiency, that's great for the environment. How's it great for you? Why have we got these VCs saying, yeah, I'll give you $200 million, yeah, I want to value at $1.6 billion. Where's the cut coming from? How, what are the blue sky thoughts as to how big Blah Blah Car could become? Yeah, so, so I think it's, it's really two things. I mean, A is the, the thing we just mentioned, the size of the market. I mean, people now realize that, okay, you're disrupting that transport market on a global scale. You're changing car usage on a global scale. Uh, and, and then you're cashing in, you'll get taking a little fee from each truck. Well, it, it, each exactly. I mean, the way it works is a passenger is going to pay a driver. Uh, typically, on average, in Europe, it's going to be 15 to 20 euro. Uh, and then out of that, we're going to take a small cut. So it's going to be 10 to 15 percent of that is going to be a cut to the company, which is how we make money as a company. So obviously, if you think of that on a, on a unit basis, we're talking about like a couple of euros max per transaction. When when you look at the size of that market, it becomes pretty interesting. So, Nicola, how, how big do you think you can actually be? Would you ever sell? Have you had interest? I mean, if you're a big car company, right, and you're saying, oh, these guys are disrupting me, have you been approached by anyone who wants to buy you? So, I mean, obviously, we always have discussions with partners and so on. But, but today, I mean, when you do a fundraise at $200 million uh, valued at $1.6 billion, uh, essentially, I think what we're signaling is that we want to stay independent for the long run, right? So we want to build a standalone company that maybe one day is going to IPO. I don't know. You know it's, pretty, it's pretty far down the road. But, but essentially, we're not building a company to be acquired. We're building a company to, to build like a standalone, uh, hopefully iconic company in Europe. But that would be your dream, IPO? Would that be a dream? Or well, I, I would say you know, if, the, the dream would be to stay independent for a long time. So, so at some point along that path, probably there is an IPO. But right now, we're not thinking or preparing for that. We just essentially we want to scale. We want to grow the company another 10, 20x okay. on, on a global scale. And then again, maybe at some point you, you think about an IPO. It's interesting. You've gone for cash to US investors, two big US investors here. It's, we're almost we're starting to see unicorns. Just today, HelloFresh is also just yeah. saying, Rocket saying, look, HelloFresh is rated it is now 2.6 billion euro valuation. Are Europeans getting it? Are we now seeing European companies staying in for the long haul, building billion dollar companies? Uh, exactly. I think that's the main change we've seen over the last couple of years. It's European companies. If you look at the last 10, 15 years, 
most European companies were almost built to be acquired, right? And we've seen that a lot over and over again. It's not a bad thing, but, but we're sort of missing the sort of like standalone iconic companies in Europe. So maybe Spotify is one, maybe HelloFresh is going to be another one, and we hope we'll be one. Uh, and I think we need a few of these companies in Europe to really kickstart like a larger ecosystem. So you know, I hope in the grand scheme of things, I hope what we do is going to trigger that. And it's going to trigger more ambition uh, within, well, within entrepreneurs in Europe, within venture capitalists in Europe, to back companies all the way. All right. Well done for flying the European flag and congratulations on the funds. Thank Nicolas Brusson there, co-founder and COO of ride-sharing service BlaBlaCar.